something for that. Okay, um, five three and five four. We're going to combine these two. I actually, if I had my preference, I would do these in a different order. Uh, but I'm going to kind of do them together. So five three is about independence. We're going to define what it means for two events to be independent. We're going to look at the multiplication rule, uh, and then this at least probabilities. That's in the online lesson. We'll we'll talk more about it there. We're not going to talk a lot about it in the video. Five four. And again, we're going to just put these together. 5-4 is about conditional probabilities. And I like to do this first because I think it helps with this idea of independence. So we're going to talk about conditional probabilities, another rule, the general multiplication rule, and then again, uh, independence. So conditional probability. I'm going to introduce this by way of an example with this uh, deck of cards where you have um, the standard 52 card deck. You have the three suits, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. And suppose we have this example. We want to draw two cards at random without replacement. So that means we draw a card and then we keep it out. So we hold on to it and then we draw another card. So that's without replacement. The question is, if we know the first card is a heart, what's the probability that the second card is also a heart? So let's define a couple of events. We're going to say E is the event that the first card is a heart and F is the event that the second card is a heart. So we have 13 hearts. So the prob we want to find the probability that the second is a heart given that the first is a heart. In terms of probability language, this is the probability that F occurs, that F, remember F is that the second is a heart. So this is the probability that F occurs given that E has already occurred. And like a lot of things in math, we're going to abbreviate that and just put a vertical line, probability of F given E. So this is how we read this. This is the probability of F given E. So if we think about that, if the first card is a heart, there's one less heart and one less card overall. So if we want to find the probability that the second is a heart, knowing that the first is a heart, that would be 12 out of 51. And so the conditional probability. Uh, the definition here, the probability of F given E is the probability that the event F occurs given that E has already occurred. So that is conditional probability. Okay, so now what we need to come up with uh, using this idea of conditional probability is a multiplication rule. So suppose we have three bills in our wallet, a, a $2 bills and a $5 bill. The question is if we randomly draw two without replacement, so draw, you could draw them at the same time, but take one out and then take another one out. Um, what is the probability that the second one is a five? So let's think about all the different options there. We'll, we'll define some events, excuse me, defend, we'll define event E that the first is a dollar bill uh, and then event F the second is a five dollar bill. The reason we need to define event E is because we're really looking just at F the second one but we need to know something about the first one so we're going to try to find the probability that the second is a $5 bill, but that's really both of them, the probability that the first is a $1 bill and that the second is a $5 bill. So let's think about all the different options. We could have a $1 bill and a $1 bill, a $1 and a $5, and a $1 and a $1. So by that we mean, I wish I kind of had highlighted these while we do it. We could have had um, $1, $1, $1, $5, or one dollar, one dollar. Oh, and then there's one more, one dollar, five dollars. So we could have, let's zoom in order here. Uh, one dollar, one dollar. Oh, wrong direction. One dollar, five dollar. One dollar, one dollar. One dollar, five dollar. And then five dollar, one dollar. Or five dollar, one dollar. So those are the six possibilities uh, that we could have drawing them in order if we draw the, drew the first one and then drew the second one. Um, and so if we look at these six possibilities, two of them, two of those six possibilities have a five as the second. And so that probability then would be two out of six or one third. So what I want to do is I want to use this hopefully pretty basic probability question. I mean, I don't mean to imply that these are easy, even a simple one like this, kind of wrapping your head around it can be a little tricky, but I want to use this to illustrate 
and try to uh, come up with this multiplication rule. So we've got these six here, and here are the two that we want. So we know four of these six have a dollar that's first. Uh, these four here. Four of the six have a dollar that's first. Um, of those, two of them, half of them, have a five dollar. So what we have is then half of those four out of six, which is four out of six times a half. Half of the four out of six. Or if you simplify that, it's two thirds times one half. So what I want to do is investigate that. What does that two thirds mean? What does that one half mean? So let's look at that two thirds. The two thirds is really a probability that there's a dollar first. If you if you have the three dollar the three bills and you pick one, there's a chance there's a one out of three chance that it's a dollar. Now, given that you took a dollar, there's a dollar and a five dollar left. So given that you took a dollar, one out of two is the probability that it's a five dollar bill. That's a conditional probability. Given that um, you chose E here, given that you chose a $1 bill, the probability that it's a $5 bill for the second one is 1 out of 2. And interestingly then, the probability that both happen, that you choose a $1 bill and then you choose a $5 bill, the probability of that is those two multiplied together. The probability of E times the probability of F given E. All right. You might need to slide this ladder bar back and rewind and watch this again. Um, but what this gives us is the multiplication rule. The general multiplication rule says the probability of E and F both occurring is the probability that E occurs times the probability that F occurs given that E has already occurred. Okay, what this leads us to then is the concept of independence. So we talked about this conditional. What's the probability of F given that E has occurred? Well, independence means that, so two events E and F are, independence, are independent if the occurrence of one doesn't affect the probability of the other. That's what independent means. Whether one happens or not doesn't affect the probability of the other. The technical definition here, two events E and F are independent if the occurrence of one does not affect the probability of the other. That's what independent means. So let's think about um, what this would mean may maybe with a probability rule. So if events E and F are independent, what would that mean? Well, there's two different thing ways to look at this. If they're independent, um, I wonder if, I don't know if I can get can I get a writing tool here? This is not going to look good. I'm going to do a pen here, but <laughs> this is not going to be good. I'm on my mouse. I don't. I have a pen with my tablet. Anyway, it's too complicated. I got a webcam mic up. I'm not that sophisticated. So if they're independent, then let's think about E and F. Um, if we look at the probability of F, then it shouldn't matter whether E occurs or not. If E occurs, the probability of F shouldn't change. So with our probability statement, oh yeah, that's bad. The probability of F, given that E has occurred, oh, that's horrible, should be equal to the probability of F by itself. So whether or not E has occurred should not change the probability of F. Similarly, scroll back here, um, in this general multiplication rule, if the probability of F then um, isn't affected by E, then you don't need this part here if they're independent. So let's go back over here and here's another one. Oh, I feel so bad. Everything's so professional and then I have this crap. The probability of E and F, oh, I'm trying so hard to be neat, it looks horrible, should be equal to then the probability of E times the probability of F. I don't know why I hand wrote this. See, 
I'm using the same PowerPoint I used from last semester. And last semester I did these in class. And so I kind of just wrote on the board. So I think I'm going to have to change this for next time. But it's Friday afternoon. It's late. It's like 4 o'clock. i got to get home. You're going to have to deal with it. Sorry. So those are the two things, though, that we can say if E and F are independent. Uh, the probability of F given E should be just the same as the probability of F. And if we want to find the probability of E and F, we can just multiply the two probabilities together. Been saying this every section, but the only way for you to really wrap your head around this is you're going to have to look at lots of examples. In the online lesson below, click the link. Try a bunch of those examples on your own before revealing the answers. Uh, and then the homework, hopefully, um, hopefully after, you're, after you're done with the homework, you'll feel better about some of these rules.